Shalom Akim. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, Bahashim Rakakwadash, the Bahanas of the Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. And um, it's going to be a quick one going into how we got to remember the tightrope. We got to remember our walk. And um, just keeping that in mind as you seek to add more things to your life. Okay? Because the walk stays the same, but how hard it is, is up to you, you know, so to speak. So this is 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse, I'll start at the top. And when he had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which I had been sent, which had been sent unto me the nights of four. And he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am coming to tell thee. And I said, Speak on my power. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it may be deep and great. But put the case the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There's also another king. There's also another thing. Salaki. A city is built it and set upon a broad field. And is full of all. And is full of all good things. And the entrance thereof is narrow. And is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand. And on the left a deep water. And only one path between them both. So. This parable is going into the kingdom of heaven and how it's filled with all goodly things, as even the Lord told um, the prophets of old in the book of uh, Genesis. He said how the Holy Land would be filled with milk and honey, which is all goodly things. You know, things that are sweet and are profitable for us. But we have to pass, you know, remember to get to the... Um, in the ancient world to get to the uh you know the holy land we had to walk through the wilderness you know when you know we walking in peril we didn't know what was going on you know um you know it was a scary walk and that's how it is to get to the um the kingdom of heaven how about shimmy how was shot all right we got to get past you know this den of thieves this den of vipers all right, and um, walk circumspect, walk circumspectly so that we don't get bit. All right, all right. For one, you're living in this flesh. All right, and then you're in the world where wickedness abides. All right, but we got to get past this in order to get to the kingdom. So that's what the parable is meaning. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water, and one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city, and that's the point, you know, so the path between, you know, the path to get to the kingdom of heaven is tight. You know, it's likened into, you could think of it even as a tightrope, you know, to where you got to watch your, you got to watch how you walk, you know, because there's little room for error. And, um, you know, on our way there, it's like, how are you walking? You know, are you walking like a drunkard, you know, to where you could easily fall on either side and hurt yourself? You know, even the Apostle Paul said, examine thyself. Though you're not your own selves. All right, so we got to examine our walk. And, um, you know, in this world, we may have, you know, you may have particular opportunities to receive more of, um, more of an income. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Some certain brothers got businesses and stuff like that. But you yourself have to know how is this going to affect your walk. Because mind you, the walk is still the same, as I mentioned before, but now you're adding more, you, now you're adding more to carry 
on that walk, you know? So now the walk could get wearier and wearier, you know, and um, make it harder for you to get to that finish line, you know? So, um, yeah, man, we got to watch the way we got to examine, you know, what you choose to bring into your life and what you uh, disregard. All right. Like, again, I'm going to just grab that. Apostle Paul said, examine thyself. We should know ourselves. You know, we sh you should be your own parent, so to speak. You know, you should be able to understand yourself. Let's see. That's a good one. Before, jump, before judgment, examine thyself. And in a day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. That's the rock 18 and 20. But um, there's another one I was thinking of. It says, um, I think it's 1 Corinthians 11. Yeah, 1 Corinthians uh, 1131. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, damn, that's a good one too, but. The scriptures in a nutshell tells us to examine ourselves, you know, know how we walking. And uh, again, as I mentioned, as I said before, um, adding things or taking away from adding things to your life or taking away things from your life that can hinder you in this walk, you know, to where it's hard for you to see yourself now, you know, um, This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, verse 13. Observe and take a heed, for thou walkest in peril of thy overthrowing. Okay? Because best believe as you walk in, you know, you got Satan, you know, at the end of the rope, shaking and shit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to knock you off your pivot, trying to knock you off your, uh, you know, trying to knock you off your path. To where you you end up getting destroyed. Observe and take a heed, for thou walkest in peril of thy overthrowing. When thou hearest these things, awake in thy sleep. You know. Yeah, man. So just knowing how, just knowing how you're walking, is very important. All right. As I mentioned before, you know opportunities to make more money or you know you may you know see a chick or you know she want to have a baby or some shit but uh, understanding how that will affect your walk because again the walk is still the same but now you just made it harder on yourself you know and for some brothers it may not you know they may be able to like the apostles and elders man they've been walking longer so they have a good Understanding of their footing, you know, to where they may be able to add more in their plate and it may not affect them. To so as you just come into the truth, you here, you there, you there, you know. This is the book of, uh, what was that, Matthew 7?
Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Okay? Making sure that foundation is straight before you build on top of that house, you know? That's basically the main thing. We want to make sure that foundation, our foundation in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is straight, first and foremost. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall upon it. You know? Because, um, you know, this walk is about to get uh, harder, especially for the men of the Lord, as it says in 2nd Ezra 16, that they shall be destroying and spoiling all those that fear the Lord. You know? The loved ones, you know, the ones that we thought, you know, that our that was our loved ones is going to test us. Your job is going to be taken away from you, you know. So we got to understand that uh, we got to be able to let it go, you know, understanding and being mature enough to let things go. All right. So it's some quick in the spirit. Lord willing, you are going to edify. Shalom to the elect.